My name is Leon Beck. Um, Islamic name is Ibrahim. Um, I was mainly, I was brought up um, in a Christian uh, family. So I've got a very Christian background, Pentecostal Christian. Um, my, my mum goes to church, my grandma goes to church, all my aunts go to church. Um, I went to Sunday school um, for a brief period, um, but um, when I, once I reached my teens, um, I stopped going to church. Um, and it's only in, until my mid-twenties that I wanted to find God again. Um, so I started, um, started to go back to church, um, a local church in Golders Green. Um, this is where I started to learn a lot more about Jesus, um, a lot more, a, a bit more about God, um, and, and I just wanted to sort of implement um, all the, the teachings and fundamentals into my life. I always had a belief in God, so I guess from my family's Christian upbringing, um, it was more the Christianity view. Uh, so I had a belief that um, I always had that belief instilled to me that Jesus was the Son of God um, and I just sort of blindly followed that um, until I did my own sort of research into it. So over time, um, when I got more involved in the church after a year, um, I found out that certain questions weren't being answered and some things weren't adding up or making sense for me. Um, coupled with that, um, I used to watch um, a few segments of the Gospel Channel uh, and those channels more or less gave mixed messages. For example, they kept saying Jesus is God, worship Jesus, um, and even certain practices like um, healing. Um, it, was, it, was very, it was a very odd thing for me to watch because, for example, you would see certain people who's been in, wheelchair in, been in a wheelchair for around 30, 40 years, um, and suddenly a pastor would go up and suddenly just touch him and he's suddenly walking again. And I just found this a bit stage show um, and that's sort of what swayed my sort of opinion and my thoughts on Christianity. So I was thinking, is this for real? Um, I know that it's, it's scriptural, but the way every pastor can, is, just knows how to do it, this seemed very weird for me. Um, so that's when I started um, sort of reading into Christianity a lot more um, and watching other pastors on, or televangelists, if I can call, it, call them that, um, on TV. Um, so that's when it was like, okay, what's this televangelist saying? How does he sort of speak on Jesus or God? And it, they just, just found to have very mixed messages. And even in the Bible, it says Jesus does say, "Do not worship him; worship God alone." But in these channels, and even when you go to church, people are still worshiping Jesus in a sense. Um, so, for example, if I wanted blessings or um, if I wanted something or needed help in life, they would always say, "Pray to Jesus." And I was like, "Why not pray to God?" You know, um, so I just found this all a bit strange. Um, and it felt like I was worshipping two entities. So I was worshipping Jesus and God. So it wasn't so much um, a polytheistic religion. It was become a more monotheistic, in a sense. What attracted me to Islam, um, I think it was the whole sort of community um, vibe. Um, as, as I say, one Ummah. Um, and it, Islam is a, it's like a religion where everyone sort of looks after each other in a sense. Like when you go to a masjid, everyone just greets you. Um, everyone that like, treats you with respect. Um, even when you're sort of walking on the street, you can just say assalamu alaikum to someone, a fellow Muslim, and he'll say it right back to you. Even shaking, of the, even shaking your hands. Interesting topics that I discovered in Islam was the five daily prayers. Um, to me, I just wanted to know why do they have to pray, pray five times a day? Um, is it hard work? Does it take out too much time? Um, so that was my first sort of introduction and the first bit of research that I wanted to uh, just to find out. Um, second was the news and the media. Um, it seems that every time I would watch the news or watch certain gospel channels. They would always say Islam is this, Islam is that. It was always bad news. When people hear this, they think, oh, Islam's this then. Islam's a bad religion. But with me, it was like, really? Um, Islam, does it really, is it really that violent? 
um, do they solely believe in killing non-Christians or people who are non-Muslim? Is Islam really about this? Um, that was the first sort of pin that dropped. I was like, okay, I want to research this. I want to actually read this for myself because I'm a firm believer in there's good, there's, there's such thing as taking good advice, but if you're being told something, it's best to do your own research into it. So that's where I started off from, and that's where I sort of went online and watched videos. So I started watching um, certain sort of sheikhs um, and imams, um, such as um, Dr. Zakir Naik. Um, I started watching convert stories. Um, I started watching videos on um, how Islam affects different people's daily lives. And all these were sort of beautiful stories. Um, you know, how it's got them grounded, um, level-headed, um, and it's also got them in a sort of an aura of peace, where they feel that um, their life has greatly been enhanced by Islam. So all this was sort of, you know, quite, quite different to what I was reading on the news. Um, so I started questioning, why is the news reporting this, but then people who's actually living the life of Islam telling me this? So it was, it was, it was sort of conflict, conflicting arguments, and this is what sort of um, prompted me to um, research into Islam a lot more. So after a couple of months, uh, actually up to a year of research, of reading, getting into talks, going to talks, watching YouTube videos, um, getting into a few small debates um, about Chris, uh, Islam and Christianity, I found that my heart was slowly warming um, to Islam. Um, and it got to a point again where I just couldn't wait to watch videos when I got home. Um, I wanted to buy multiple books on Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, Islam overall, how to pray. Um, so after all this knowledge, my heart was slowly turning. So this is where me and my friend, my good friend of mine, who I've known some, from school, he invited me to, um, or took me to Regent's Park Mosque. Um, and this is where she surprisingly um, got me set up with a one-on-one -on -one talk with the MM. Um, so the Imam spoke about, spoke about the foundations of Islam all the way from um, Prophet Adam all the way up to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And from here I was literally, I was more or less like, I kind, I kind of want to follow this religion. I just need to ask a few more questions. That was my big problem. Like, there was always small questions I wanted to ask, such as how do you know, how do you know this, who does that? Who? There was always these small questions, but from what I gathered and from the research I'd gathered, I knew that something in me wanted to follow the path of Islam. Um, so I asked one of the security um, guys who was standing outside the masjid, can I go and see how people pray? And I remember it was Margaret prayers and it was the day before Ramadan. Um, so I watched Margaret prayers and I just remember the silence. And I, and I stepped in to the prayer room and took my shoes off. I nearly walked to with my shoes on. <laughs> um, and I remember everyone just standing. Um, and I remember the silence, and then the Al Fatiha being um, recited, and it was it was beautiful. I was like, wow. From then, I was like, I really want to to follow this religion. I, I was I was more or less dead sold on it. Um, I didn't take my shahada that day. Um, I remember when I went home, um, and I went to sleep that night, and I remember having the dream, um, and this dream um, was me and two other guys or two other beings. I don't, know who, I don't know who they were. I know that we each had backpacks on. Um, and we were walking through a desert. Um, and in the desert, there, was, there were all these statues that are half buried in sand. Um, and there were these odd shapes half buried in sand. And these statues are well-known statues. Um, I just didn't know why they were buried halfway in sand. Um, so we carried on walking. I remember it was, it was more or less like nighttime. The, the sky was pitch black and the sand was clear to see. It was like sunshine beaming on the sand, but it was night because it was, it was strange. Um, and I remember climbing up um, a square, big cube that was buried in the sand and I heard the adhan. Um, and I don't remember the two other beings behind me. I don't know where they went, but I remember hearing the adhan and I didn't see anyone standing in front calling it. It just came from everywhere. It just filled the atmosphere. And it was very strange because it was the whole Yadhan, it was the whole of the Yadhan that was recited. And after that, I woke up and it was like, okay, wow, what happened? What does that mean? I wanted to get translated. I looked through so much books and I looked through Islamic meanings. Um, and 
it was sort of obvious to me that it was a calling. It was like, Leon, follow Islam, you know, come to Islam. And that day, I went to Regent's Park Masjid with my friends, and I took Shahada a day before Ramadan. And, uh, and I didn't really have any regrets. I remember coming home smiling. It was just a smile, I was just happy. I wasn't scared, I wasn't frightened, it was just happy. And I was like, yep, I made, definitely made the right choice. practice that I thoroughly enjoy is the main thing is Salah. Um, definitely, you know, going to the masjid, um, performing wudu, which is mean, just basically means just washing before you present yourself in front of um, Allah. Um, um, obviously, when you go into uh, the prayer room and the alarm goes off, it's just, a, it's just such a beautiful um, sound, which is essentially core to prayer. Um, and then when you're standing alongside the brothers, and the Imam is reciting um, the Al Fatiha. Um, and then after that, reciting another, another verse of the Quran, it's just, it's just peaceful. Um, it's just like you and Allah alone. You're standing in front of Allah, worshiping Allah. Um, another um, practice that I thoroughly enjoy is dhikr. Um, dhikr essentially just means remembrance. Um, there's two ways you can essentially do this you can either do dhikrs on your hands, or you can use dhikr beads. Um, and you're just sort of reciting Allah's name, um, so either 33 times or 100 times. What inspired me about the Prophet um, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Um, as they say, he was the walking Quran. Um, and that inspired me quite a bit because it's the way he taught his Sahaba at the same time. Um, his, also his mannerisms, um, he's very gentle. Um, and he was very fair and very, and very just. Um, it's not what people make him out to be when people say he was a warmonger, um, violent, and he, he sort of taught Islam with the sword. All this, ain't, all this isn't true. When you read the Quran and you read the Hadith, um, he actually taught both men and women. Um, so this is what sort of inspired me because it enabled me to read a lot more about him. Um, about his life, um, about his companions, um, and also who he, um, he taught, um, and his extended family also. What are my favourite verses of the Quran? I actually have them in my phone. Um, my favourite verses um, is, the first one is unquestionably, um, by the remembrance of Allah, hearts are assured. To me, that means Allah is always around you um, and he's always sort of by your side which I've always believed I've always had a strong belief in God um, which is which is what prompted me to sort of research and get to know him a lot more um, my second favorite verse of the Quran um, is he, um, he is he is Allah there is no God other than him it is he who knows what is hidden as well as what is in the open he is our Rahman, our Rahim. Um, to me, this is such a beautiful um, Quranic verse. Um, it just goes to show that you should be, it, to me, this means that you should be worshipping no other deity but Allah alone. Um, and it's only Him that you seek um, for guidance um, and for help, in my, in my sort of personal opinion. Right now we're outside Rumi's Cave, which is a, a community space. And this is one of the first places I came to, um, to learn more about Islam. Um, so this is where I actually met Sheikh Bibika, and I listened to a few, uh, more than a few of his talks. Uh, and this is also where I, sort of met, I met loads of great people, loads of new friends. Um, and it's just a really good community hub to be in. Um, we also host events, we hold classes. Um, and we also house, um, host guests who come from all over the world to give talks um, and also set up a few charity initiatives at the same time. Um, why is it important to have Muslim friends? Um, I would say it's important because obviously we definitely have something all in common and that's sort of believing in the same religion. Um, and also we get to discuss topics um, that's sort of currently trending or we get to talk about um, how to sort of better ourselves in our walk in Islam. Um, 
and also because I actually go to a few Dicker circles, um, it's nice to have that community who's quite close to you and worshipping God together. Um, and other, the other aspect of it is more social, fun social stuff. So like we go out to dinner together, um, grab coffees, um, and also even most importantly praying together. So it's good to be in that sort of community where you know that there won't be any clashes on, on anything. Um, and you just sort of, sort of get on with each other under one umar. The m large majority of friends, um, new friends that I met were from here, Rumi's Cave. Um, so obviously volunteering on um, helping set up event nights, um, even volunteering on certain charity initiatives. Um, especially with the open mic night that we have, where we all have like a like for spoken word, poetry, um, music. Um, so it's good to sort of meet new friends, meet existing friends, talk about stuff. Um, and also there's Rumi's Kitchen as well, which is another um, initiative that's sort of in coalition with Rumi's Cave. Um, so, so Rumi's Kitchen is another way to meet new and existing friends, especially the, the volunteers and the guests who actually come, who, where a lot of them are homeless. But it's always good to sort of sit down, talk to them, because a lot of them really do just want someone there to be, you know, to talk to them, keep them company, which is always, uh, which is always a rewarding experience. Uh, hence why I like sort of, um, hence why I like actually taking part in the charity. This is my uh, good friend Takir. Um, we actually met at a uh, charity called Rumi's Kitchen, um, which is, which is a, an initiative um, started by uh, Sheikh Bibika. Um, so we've been volunteering at the kitchen for around just over two years, I would say. Um, one and a half years? Yeah, one and a half years, two years. Um, and since then, we just gradually got to know each other and just became friends through there. So I'm hanging around with Leon over the last year and a half or so. One thing I've realised is with converts, you don't get the cultural baggage that you get as a born Muslim. So when you um, think of the things that people do in their culture and they bring it to Islam, and they tell you this is Islam. When you're with a convert, you really get a sense of how simple and clean and easy Islam can be. And that can kind of be a breath of fresh air, I'd say. I think one of the big misconceptions um, is in Islam is this whole thing around oppression. Um, before I joined, before I um, took my Shahada and I was researching about Islam, a lot of people were saying you know, about the, the hijab being a form of oppression or the niqab being a form of oppression. But when I, was, when I started doing my research and started talking to reverts and um, born Muslims, they told quite a different story. So, it was, stuff like make, it was stuff like the hijab making them feel um, closer to their religion and it gave them some sort of sense of identity. Um, and also because it's, because it's actually a scriptural, um, it's not something that they're forced to wear. It's actually, they, they actually want to follow it themselves, in a sense. So they, they feel that within themselves, they, they want to do it. And it's the same with the guys as well. Um, whereas the guys, most people think that you know you're actually forced, like you know, you know, by Cain or whatever, to do the five prayers. But a lot of people, most all Muslims, should I say, do the five prayers out of love. You know, they actually want to you know pray to Allah. They actually want to worship Allah. They actually want to get to know Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. Yeah, I mean, a lot of these people who say Islam is oppression with the hijab and the niqab, they never actually speak to people who wear the hijab or who wear the niqab. They just assume, and then they kind of all. I guess you could say overpower what those people think. So in a sense, what they're doing is the oppression in that they don't actually care what people say. It's just a thinly veiled attack at Islam, I think. And when you actually speak to them, you know that yeah. they're actually happy to do it. They're completely fully aware of what they're doing. What my impression of Islam was, um, I knew very little about Islam. Um, obviously, I knew the basics. I knew you know, that they pray five times a day. I knew they wore specific, some or most wore certain types of clothing. Um, and I knew about you know the hijab and the car, but I didn't really know the reasoning behind it. So I thought it was just something that that you were forced to wear essentially, and also coupled with the media as well that you know you know all the bombings and all the attacks and stuff. So I thought, wow, this religion is pretty you know pretty sort of hardcore sort of thing. Um, so that was my initial impressions of it. And that's up until I done my own reading on it. 
And then when I was researching, I found that what I was researching and listening to was very different compared to what was being perpetrated on the news. So that enabled me to go to Regent's Park Masjid, actually buy a Quran and Hadith. And I read it from the start and I actually read halfway through it. Um, and what I found is that it's very black and white, it's very direct, very straight to the point. Um, and you've got some stories in there, so you've got stories about Moses, you've got stories, some stories about Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, you've got some stories about um, Mariam. And it's, very, it's, it's a very sort of beautiful book, and it's not this violent, corrupt, um, you know, thing or book that people are, are making it out to be. Um, I think when people have formed those sort of opinions, they're just listening to the media and what people are saying without really actually reading up, reading up, on, reading up on it themselves. Do you need Islam to be a better person? Um, I wouldn't say you need it to be a better person, but if you want to, be, if you want to become more God conscious um, and become more um, relaxed in your walk in life, then I would say Islam is definitely the way. Um, Islam is all about um, Ummah or community. Um, and it's also about reflection and it's also about remembrance. Um, with those three, with those, with those combination of things, um, mixed, it'll definitely lead you to a more straighter and clearer path. How has my life improved since my conversion? Um, I've, so I would say it's improved because I'm more conscious about God um, and I'm more conscious about praying every day um, to God um, and seeking His forgiveness um, and making dua. Um, I'm also involved in a lot more charity projects, um, which I've never really been involved in um, prior to um, joining, uh, take, converting to Islam. I have a lot more, I've got a yearning to learn more about God and learn more about the religion of Islam, um, which to me was, which to me is good in a sense that I know that I'm comfortable, um, I know that I'm comfortable in the path that I follow. Um, and if it leaves me learning, wanting to learn a lot more about my religion, then I'm absolutely happy. The advice I would give is definitely do all the research yourself. Um, I wouldn't, obviously, if you want to listen to the media on what's going on around the world, obviously that's fine, but when the media does have the propensity to talk negative um, about Islam, um, what I would do is do the research yourself, talk to knowledgeable people, um, even get books out, watch YouTube videos, even watch revert videos, um, listening to how their life has changed and what Islam has done for them. That's the only way you're truly going to sort of get real insight on how Islam is and how it is in your daily life. Um, and also visit sort of mosques and you know, don't be afraid to just walk in and tell people that you're just want to experience how it is. They'll let you in, they're very welcome and they lack a community. Um, that's, that's the best advice I would give. What does Islam mean to me? Um, to me, it just basically means remembrance in everything you do. Um, so whether you are setting out on a journey, um, whether you're going to the masjid or meeting with friends, um, the, the five daily prayers is there to help you focus on Allah. Um, and, and even when you're performing dhikr um, every day, um, it just means constant remembrance um, and a, sort of a guidance into how to sort of live your life. 